dream became this and this. You get where I'm going. While he became a legend, they became obsessed. LeBron James. There's Kevin Durant. Determined. Blake Griffin hammers it home. To be next. I came up through these streets. Now who's running the show? Me. Ha ha he he. Yeah. We topping the bill now. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go. Yeah. I came up through these streets. Now who's running the show? Me. Ha ha he he. He he. Yeah. Topping the bill now. With the sights and sounds of New York City, we welcome you to the 2016 Jordan Brand Classic presented by American Family Insurance. It's a rowdy crowd coming into the Barclays Center tonight. They're ready to see some of high school basketball's best. The Jordan East team versus the Jordan West squad as we get ready to say so long to the high school class of 2016. Mike Cousins, Paul Biancardi, ESPN's National Director of Recruiting and 11-year pro LaFonso Ellis. Glad to have you along with us here tonight. One of the good matchups, one of the great matchups we're going to see, guys, tonight is the starting point guards next year at Duke and De'Aaron Fox at Kentucky Bonds. I love De'Aaron Fox. I love guys who can play both ends of the floor. You're talking about a guy who had eight 40 plus point games in his career. A guy who can absolutely get to the rim. And I love how unselfish he is. He has the floaters, can get all the way to the rim. How about this? And one of those 40 point games that made 10 threes got extended range. But this is where I like him when he can get in the gaps and finish at the rim. De'Aaron Fox is sensational on both ends of the floor. And for the West, Frank Jackson, he's a true combo guard. I like to call him a points guard. Explosive with three-point range. I love the way he reads the game. He's loaded with leadership to run a team. And he's part of that sensational number two class headed to Duke. Fourth member of our crew tonight, Quinn Kesnick on the sideline. Marquise Bolden uh, from Dallas, Texas, is our only undecided player here, uh, considering Duke, Kentucky, and TCU. Where do you stand right now, Marquise, in terms of making a decision? Uh, I'm getting really close to the end. I mean, I plan on making a decision uh, real soon. It's getting close to the end, so I mean, uh, I kind of have to make a decision. I've been talking to all the coaches and getting uh, the most I can out of it, so I mean, I'm ready. What's more important? You mentioned playing style, uh, player development, and relationships. So which one of those stand out? Really just relationships. I mean, I want to feel comfortable at the university, and I want to be able to, like, just come to the coaches about anything. Thank you, Mark. We celebrate his 18th birthday on Sunday. Announcement pending, Mike. And perhaps some relationship building to do with a coaching turnover at TCU. For the West, Cassius Winston and Malik Monk with Frank Jackson in the backcourt with Miles Bridges up front headed to Michigan State. And Wenyan Gabriel, a huge rise for him in the last 12 months going to Kentucky. Shamori Pines, Andrew Jones, Amir Coffey headed to Minnesota. Villanova Omari Spellman with Bolden there for the West. Connecticut picks up Altari Gilbert. We talked about De'Aaron Fox and Markel Fultz going cross country to Washington. Duke's Jason Tatum and Bam Adebayo in the front court out of North Carolina on his way to Kentucky next year. The rest of the bench for the East. Harry Giles has been out the whole season, number one in the ESPN 100. Another impressive player there, Jonathan Isaac, headed to Florida State next year to suit up for the Seminoles. Here comes the East team, led by Altari Gilbert. And right to open things up, it's a corner three, no good for Markel Fultz. Jason Tatum cleans it up. And that's what I love about Jason Tatum. He can not only shoot it from the outside, put it on deck, get to the rim. I love how he knows exactly where the basketball is right there, and he's always around it. To your point, I'm sorry, to your point, Fonz, he loves to score. He doesn't just settle for jump shots. Bam Adebayo runs the floor, and there's the potential for a couple shattered backboards next year in Lexington with him. We're looking at a mini Dwight Howard. Broad shoulders, great hands, 32 in the black, headed to Lexington. It's one of the areas Kentucky struggled last year. Couldn't get any front line support. Bam Adebayo is going to provide a lot down in the low post. And Bam is a high double-double guy from the high school game. How about that step back? He knows how to create space, Jason Tatum. That's why we like to call him the best and most complete offensive player in the class. 22 and a black going to Duke. Number two in that senior class. Long try for Bridges is cleaned up by Bentonville, Arkansas's Malik Monk. Tonight, a unique feature is you can watch the game 
from our above the rim camera coverage. It's available on Watch ESPN, so a different angle than what you get on a normal broadcast. Find that on Watch ESPN on your computer, tablet, or smartphone to go above the rim. Miles Bridges getting up above the rim. Nice assist by five in the white, Malik Monk known as the scoring guard, but he threw it upstairs, Fonz, to Bridges. Yeah, Miles Bridges reminds me of Rodney Rogers back in the day at Wake Forest. This kid can really get off the floor. So before we get too early into this one, guys, how do you watch these games and evaluate a player in a game where it's so quickly up and down? Well, I don't know if you evaluate it, Michael. You just enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, there's so much skill, athleticism in this class. The class of 216. One of the best, I think, since 2008. We had Derrick Rose, O.J. Mayo, Kevin Love. There's so much talent on the floor in this game tonight. I don't know if it's an evaluation or just entertainment. Yeah, and Paul, to your point, is I enjoy watching guys who compete on both ends of the floor. And that's why we talked about De'Aaron Fox earlier. You and I were watching out of bio yesterday. This kid hates to lose any competition. And anytime it slows down, he goes to the free throw line, always working on his game. So I'm looking to see who's going to be the alpha dog that steps up and plays both ends of the floor. A blow by there with future Big Blue teammates. Malik Monk going right by Bam out of bio. And that's what really makes Malik Monk so special. He can not only attack you off the bounce and get to the rim, where he's just a dog getting to the rim. He's got extreme range, something that Kentucky's really going to need next year. Monk has the best range in the class of 216, Fonz. You're right on the money. Markel Fultz, future Washington Husky. <laughs> that's kind of sick. I mean, this guy has impressed us in the high school game. He's impressed the NBA scouts this weekend. And at the Hoop Summit, they really like the development yeah. of Markel Fultz. He's under control. You know, he's got style and substance to his game. Well, you're talking about a team in Washington that's, that's losing their main guy and Andrew Andrews, the guy who can really put it in the basket. So there'll be nice opportunities for Fultz as De'Aaron Fox knocks down the J there to really pick up the offensive explosive power for Washington. A couple of guys heading to the draft with Murray and Chris. Mm -hmm. Fultz has to do a lot when he gets to Washington, and he can do it. Now, folks, I just want to let you know, this is not easy. He winds that thing up and reverses it on the other side easily. Looks like you, Paul Bencardi. To Matt the Catholic, what a line of players over the years. Miles Bridges elevates for a second slam in the first four minutes. We got a highly competitive group here, great athletes, mm -hmm. but the most powerful guy in the gym may be Miles Bridges and the guy who just shot that, Bam Adebayo. Those guys are just NBA powerful. Adebayo's power a little bit more evident under the basket. And a rise and finish for Marquise Bolden. He's been getting the full court press from the Duke guys, from the Kentucky guys over the last couple of weeks. That's probably part of the reason why he's ready. They're advertising to him everywhere he goes. It's not the coaches from Duke and Kentucky. It's the players in this game in the media. Fox with a takeaway doesn't finish. Altariq Gilbert makes sure Jason Tatum does. Well, that's just a little taste of what De'Aaron Fox can do. I love the fact that he picks up all over the floor. Quick hands. Marquise Bowden, 6'11", 7'6", wingspan. It's going to make Duke or Kentucky <laughs> very happy and very good. Or TCU. Or TCU. You told us TCU still in the picture yesterday. If that's what you want to believe. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's what he told me. The local school, even with Jason Tatum, was always in the picture, even with SLU. <laughs> and Tatum's dad went to SLU. Indeed. That's my area of the country. I'm that is your Lewis, area. Illinois, right across the bridge. Some Tell really us good all about it, baby. Come out of Chaminade. You and Jason Tatum, one-on-one. -on -one. Jason Tatum all day long. Fox tries the three. Tipped back in by Fultz for Gilbert. Size mismatch. Bam Adebayo goes behind the back. Can we say too much passing in an all-star game? Right now, Jason Survey Tatum. says yes, fine. <laughs> Jason Tatum had no worries about shooting in there. Doesn't get the one he likes. Now Gilbert. Fox with a left hand puts it in. Fox is 6'5 plus, long, mm -hmm. athletic, brings great speed to the court. Will be the point guard next year at Kentucky. There we go. 
Malik Monk gets up on the pass from Miles Bridges. The hang time that Malik Monk has is remarkable. That kid can really get off the floor. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and he is, gets up quickly as well. It finds he can get caught for three seconds when he's up in the air. That's how long he's, in, <laughs> he's up there, baby. That's good. I mean, he's, he's, he's up there with body control and hang time. Well, Paul, the good thing is you're in a city that doesn't sleep, and we'll be off the air by about 10 o'clock Eastern time. The comedy clubs are just getting going by that point. You've been saving your best material for springtime. You think I'm a funny guy? <laughs> oh. Uh oh Gilbert, just for show. Bam out of bio, flushes it. Kids are looking a little fatigued right now. <laughs> Not getting you know, it's back been a, playing it, defense here. Fun. It's been a long season. Uh, yes, These guys has. started last summer. Don't forget, in April on the summer circuit, all high school season. Now the finish. And our first time out comes about seven minutes in. Plenty of highlights to get us going. And folks, Malik Monk is just an outstanding athlete. But look at his ability to pass the rock as well. What beautiful time and then throwing it down. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2016 Jordan Brand Classic is brought to you by Jordan Brand. We are Jordan. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. And Gatorade. Fueling today, fueling the future. To coincide with tonight's Jordan Brand Classic, you saw a special pop-up store for Nike Plus members right across the street from the Barclays Center. Five days only, Wednesday through this Sunday. Two-point game, and Miles Bridges has shown he's coming to play tonight. Number six in the senior class. He beat you at the rim, or he can beat you behind the arc. This guy's powerful, put together strong. A combination of Mo Peterson and Brandon Dawson. He's a big reason why Michigan State is, has the number three recruiting class. When you consider the fact that Michigan State is losing Denzel Valentine, he's going to be a nice piece to provide some offense. I'm joined by Jason Tatum, number two uh, on the ESPN U100, heading to Duke. Um, All-star circuit. It's, it's been kind of a grind for you. You've been away from home quite a bit. What's it been like? Uh, it's really been tough, you know, but just we're all honored to be a part of, you know, everything that um, all these uh, all-star circuits and, you know, this is a, this is great for us, great for the fans and we just love being here. How would you describe that first run? Uh, emotions running high, guys just playing hard, uh, getting the crowd involved, a uh, little reckless at times, but we're just having fun. You wrote a terrific piece uh, thanking your mom, uh, Brandy, who, who's here. Uh, for the fans who didn't get to read it, what kind of uh, summarize it for me what was most important that the way you expressed uh, your love and the importance that she's had on your career uh really just uh where i am today you know my mom has most of uh, a lot to do with it you know just uh raising me as raising me as a single parent she was 19 you know we didn't have much growing up you know just to be where i am today um i can't thank her enough and she laid the foundation for a lot of things that are make you successful what do you what are you focused on right now as you transition from high school to college Really just keep maturing. You know, I have to go live on my own at Duke. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest part, on and off the court. You know, she has a lot to do with off the court, you know, the way I speak, you know, my intelligence, the way I talk, um, things like that. Someday you put the uh, the microphone, someone's going to put the microphone in, in, in your uh, in your face and ask you how you feel, right? Yeah, she she told me that at a very young age. And, you know, I never thought I would make it to this point, And hopefully I just keep striving and getting better and better. Thank you, Jason. Mike. Thanks, Quint Lafonso. You and Jason Tatum, both from the same area, the St. Louis area. You certainly did not grow up in an affluent area of St. Louis, yet you went on to Notre Dame, McDonald's All-American, 11 years in the NBA. How did you make that climb from where you grew up to where you finished and where you are today? Well, Jason and I have similar stories. That is that my mom had me when she was 19 years of age and figured out very quickly that I had some academic a prowess if you will and so she held my foot to the flame the entire time threatening to take away basketball if I didn't get didn't get my grades but I also had a bunch of wonderful coaches and teachers uh, from East St. Louis Illinois who uh, really created a nice support system for me uh, Paul and I were talking about the other day even growing up in the projects is the people who are around were always pushing people to the excel and so my story is very similar to Tatum's his mom, Brandy, as he mentioned, has only missed one of his games wow. over the last several years. Dedication for Jason Tatum.
play in this game and the odds are pretty good, you are destined for something special. All the way back to 2002 with Carmelo, Andrew Wiggins, now with Minnesota back in 2013. And now some of the stars in this class of 2016 to keep an eye on, Paul, as they go to college next year. When you look at that list, it's hard to separate those guys when it comes to rankings. They're all so special. They're also talented, fun, yeah. athletic. They score the ball. They play above the rim. And, and Jonathan Isaac, to me, in that group, hasn't got a lot of national attention, yeah. but may have the most upside in years to come. Well, long arms, bouncy, can play the three or the four spot. And this gives Leonard Hamilton the ability to do something that we know him for at Florida State. Now he can start to put some pressure full court on teams and really get back to Leonard Hamilton basketball, which is a very tough, strong-minded defensive team that can also score the basketball on the offensive end. Number one in the black, 6'9", three-point shooter headed to Florida State. So funny, I was standing next to him yesterday. I'm 6'8", barefooted. They listen to him at 6'9", but he towers over me. That kid's got to be around 6'10". Uh, yeah, but you it, give it, him a haircut and he I mean, loses a few it. off the roster height. If I had a mohawk <laughs> flat top, I'd be taller too. Right. Come that, on now, Fonz. That's 7'2", though. <laughs> He'll be a good boost for the Seminoles, who were down a couple of big men this year. Michael Ojo yep. was out, didn't play at all. Mm -hmm. Phil Kofer's season was cut short. And they'll get Dwayne Bacon back next year after Malik Beasley has declared for the draft. How about what Beasley did for them? You know, he went in, unpacked his bags, played for the team, head to the NBA. Was not a one-and-done type guy out of the high school ranks. Ranked in the 30s. Had a great game uh, going into college, but not a game you would say, okay, he's a one-and-done. Yeah. He worked himself into that funds, I think. Got a chance to spend a lot of time with him this year. Really classy young man. Really gets it. And I was really impressed with his ability. I didn't know he had the range that he has. He shot it very consistently from three. Close to 50%? Yeah. Another great class for Lennon Hamilton, though. Yeah. He backs that up with Isaac Forrest coming in. Trent Forrest, a uh, small forward. Mm -hmm. And C.J. Walker, nice little nasty point guard from Indy. <laughs> I yeah. love him. Back-to-back -back top 15 classes there for Leonard Hamilton and company. I think he... Wenyan Gabriel has it tipped away. Out for Spellman. That, that's just, that's just thin on thin. Oh, oh, oh. That, that's uh, thin on thin. Mm, mm, mm. Well, the NBA playoffs start tomorrow. Four games beginning with Pacers Raptors, 12.30 Eastern on ESPN, 3.30 on ABC. Steph Curry and the top-seeded Warriors taking on the Rockets, 7 on ESPN. It's the Hawks and the Celtics. And finally, 9.30, the Mavs are in Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. All games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Mike, speaking of OKC, how about Russell Westbrook with 18 triple-doubles time? <laughs> Magic Johnson for the most in NBA history. Pretty impressive year for him. An incredible mark for him and Kevin Durant. And the Thunder were 4-0 against the Mavs in the regular season. A bit of a patchwork roster for them this year. So a nice job by Rick Carlisle getting them into the postseason. 26-22, east over the west here, nearing the midway point of the first half. And the floater is good for Andrew Jones of the west. They're in the white, the east team is in the black uniforms. This is future Louisville Cardinal V.J. King, part of a one-man class right now, after former Louisville commit Frankie Hughes switched things up, and he's on his way to Missouri next year. Yeah, Louisville's got a lot coming back next year. Ray Spalding last year, freshman. Danga Dale's going to be super. And Donovan Mitchell can absolutely jump over the backboard at 6-3. We saw Shamari Pons with the bucket two in the white. Little local flavor headed to St. John's for Chris Mullen. It's nice to see local kids be able to stay home. I think Chris Mullen is going to get that thing turned around and get them going here in the next couple of years. And Pons is a big reason why. He gives St. John's that true New Yorker Pons. Mm and help build that fan base back. They have a high power staff. Yeah, they got one of the best recruiters in the country in Barry Royce. It didn't have to go too far to Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn to find him. Watch this rebound by Omari Spellman. This is 6'9", 270 plus, fellas. In traffic with two hands, headed to play for the national, defending national champions, Jay Wright at Villanova. That's a big time rebound in traffic. When he gets in shape, Fonz, he's gonna be able to Power of the paint for Villanova. Daniel Ochefu gone. Spellman in. 
Yeah, wide body, skilled, great hands. And what I was impressed with watching him over the last couple of days, he's quite agile <laughs> given the size that he has. And to your point, he's going to get in better shape, and he's going to be really tough to deal with down the low post. Now, he had an injury this year he had to deal with, so he's not in great shape right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, he can shoot it from three, and he's power in the paint. It's interesting because you remember Jalil Okafor a few years ago after that injury he had, I think it was his senior year, it was a little bit, you know, a little doughy around this time of the year, and everybody's giving him a hard a time, doughy, not yeah. fully realizing that the kid had actually been injured and been out for a little while. But he's turned out to be a pretty good player. Doughy, fleshy, I like the words. Now it's just his pockets that are full of dough. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what coming up at halftime, <laughs> Paul Biancardi will uh, put a halt on his comedy routine and answer your questions. You can tweet them using the hashtag AskCoachB to give your recruiting questions. We've got the end of the class of 2016 and their time on the circuit here tonight. 2017 class, 2018 really gets their first great look in the spotlight starting tomorrow here in Brooklyn with the first session of the Nike EYBL. Am I allowed to ask him a question? Well, the, well you got to <laughs> submit it first. You have to tweet it. You have to join Twitter <laughs> first. I'll tell you what, Sorry. 216 has been a special class. Two, 217 has some stars in the making. Obviously, DeAndre Ayton, the number one player in the junior class. Muhammad Bamba, top five. Trayvon Duval, the best point guard in the class. But it has some work to do to catch up to 16. Uh-oh. Miles Bridges. Bridges. Alfred says, Alfred why not? Left shoulder over there. This is Alterique Gilbert, who injured his left shoulder, it appeared, while reaching for a ball held by Marquise Bolden in the post. There was no contact between Gilbert and Bolden. It was that one swipe by Gilbert, and he went down to the floor. Tell you what, I watched him for four years. Fonz, he's one tough dude. Yeah. Hopefully it's just a, a sprain or minor dislocation. Yeah. Ricky Moore, the assistant coach at Connecticut, did a great job going back into Georgia. That's where he's from mm -hmm. to recruit Altery Gilbert. Yeah, he and Cassius Winston, number four on the West team in white, in my opinion, were the two most competitive guys over the last couple days. I was really impressed by the effort that they put both forth on both the offensive and the defensive ends of the floor. That's great that you love him, Winston Cassius. And mm -hmm. you, uh, Cassius Winston, you notice that because he's not a high flyer, great right. athlete. You know, he doesn't wow you, but I'll tell you what, he is full of substance. Future point guard at Michigan State for Tom Izzo. Well, because you, when you consider Michigan State, oh, nice live play off the, <laughs> the time out there. But with Tum Tum Nairn, not as much of a score, and he's a guy that can actually put it in the hole as well as being a distributor. So really looking forward to seeing how Cassius Winston does at Michigan State. I'm not even sure how Winston got that pass off. Going for Bridges. Winston, number four in the white. Michigan's Mr. Basketball given out by the coaches around the state. He puts it up nice and soft. And to his teammate, Miles Bridges, they have Josh Langford coming in as well. A 6'5", strong, athletic two-guard from the state of Alabama. And a big body, Nick Wad from Ohio. Maybe Tom Izzo's best class ever at Michigan State. These four guys, they got it all covered. Four top 100 prospects. New Alfonso Ellis and a look back 10 years ago to when the pride of Montrose Christian Kevin Durant tore it up at Madison Square Garden. Just does it so easy. The skill, the fluid, fluidness, and the deep range fonts makes him a difficult matchup back then. <laughs> and now we know in the NBA. Indeed. 16 for KD that night. Quinn Kesnick on the sideline with the Milwaukee Bucks, Tyler Ennis. Yeah, a Syracuse uh, played in this game in 2013, believe it or not. You'd be a rising college senior right now. That's hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it felt like yesterday I was just entering college and, and playing this game like these guys. What's it like for these young players to, to play in this game and to be here in New York this week? Um, it's an exciting time. I think it's a little taste of, of what these guys want to do and play professionally. Um, kind of the last chance to play in front of your family 
definitely as a high school athlete, and, and you know, the next step for them is, is you know, college. So this is the, basically the last fun game they have in, in their career, basically. What jumps out at you in terms of what you're seeing on the floor right now? Um, I think they're doing a good job of, uh, the point guard's doing a good job of passing the ball, but also the high athletic everybody is from, from the smallest guy to the biggest guy. Just, you know, the athletes in this game is uh, outstanding. You got a lot of guys patting you on the back at this stage of their careers. What, what's the biggest challenge they're going to face between now and, let's say, the start of next season? Um, I think the physicality of college. I mean, everybody's athletic in college. Everybody can play, but I think just uh, adjusting to the college game, adjusting to the, the different rules, and, and, you know, just kind of some guys having to wait their turn, and that's not something everybody's used to. It, the step after that, the, the NBA decision that, that looms for many of these stars right here, what, what, was, what was that like, and what, what, what were the factors that, that allowed you to, you know, make that move so quickly? Um, it was definitely a tough decision. You know, I was really torn into, you know, coming back to school or going back to school and, and entering the draft, but... After you know, talking to my family, talking to the coach at Syracuse, it was, uh, you know, I had a guaranteed spot. I was going to get picked in the first round, and, and you know, I just wanted to, you know, develop at the next level. And I think, you know, if you have a chance to go to the league and, and uh, you know, earn, earn your spot on the roster, I think it's time to go. Last one in terms of the point guard play here. Uh, this is a transitional game. It's not really a half, half court yeah. game. Uh, what, what's important when, when you watch a point guard trying to operate on, on some of those, uh, you know, the fast breaks? Um, I think uh, in this game it'd be keeping everybody happy. I mean, you have a you know, 20 of the best players in the country, everyone wants to go out and show what they can do, but, you know, just being able to communicate, being able to run the team, and, and I think we'll see that at the end of this game more than more than now, but I think the point guards in this game are, are really good. So later on, we can expect to see some defense. Yeah, yeah, no defense in this game. Mike. I appreciate that you tried, Quint, maybe to see if we could get some. There's Darren Fox, by the way, another point guard, who hit a three last time down the floor and bricked it there. No, that was a Syracuse guy saying, no defense, Mike. And <laughs> I know you're a Syracuse grad, so just bring that back to Coach Bayheim. The 2-3 the went pretty far this year, you could say, for Syracuse. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, he left early. He didn't even get to see Central New York at the best time of the year in the spring and the summer. But the point that he made, Fines, I want to get your opinion on this, is for a guy like Ennis, he was not expected when he came in to be a one-and-done guy, but there are so many external factors to be decided upon rather than do I come back and play college basketball when it pertains to, hey, I could be a millionaire by the time June rolls around. Well, we talked about that with regard to Demetrius Jackson at Notre Dame this year. He's a junior, would have one year of eligibility coming back. I think he's making a wise decision to go. The draft next year is supposed to be so deep because of this class that we're looking at right now. So you got to consider the economics of it. Isn't that the why, isn't that the reason why we go to school? We go to school and, and as a student to put yourself in position to be able to earn a living once you're out. We do the same thing as student athletes. I think Demetrius Jackson made a great decision. I was sad to see Tyler Ennis leave because he's one of my favorite Syracuse players of all times in terms of character, but I thought he made a wise decision as well. And that one year at Syracuse, I mean, he played with such great maturity. Mm -hmm. Frank Jackson, point guard at Duke next year, comes up empty. And a rebound by future Tar Heel Tony Bradley. Syracuse fans would have liked to see Ennis stay. That was the last time they beat Pittsburgh. <laughs> East team up by six inside of six minutes left here in the first half in Brooklyn. One more point on Ennis. Watching him over his high school career, battle tested, and he was durable. He never sat out games. He played through all the bumps and the bruises at St. Benedict's and on the summer circuit for CIA bounce. Mm -hmm. You could see that maturity level when he got to Syracuse and just had an outstanding year. You know, almost like a D'Angelo Russell type. You didn't expect it, mm -hmm. blew up a little bit. And when you blow up Fonz in the scout's eyes, got to make you move. And one of the things I loved about him, Paul, is no matter what, he's playing in, in, in one of the best conferences of all time, and you could never speed him up. He was always under control. He made the pass he wanted to make, and he took the shot that he wanted to make. Loved his poise when he was a Syracuse Orange. Here comes VJ King on his way to Louisville next year, right down the middle of the lane, and a two-hand finish. A lot of support for him in Paul VI High School. At one point, Rick Pitino and the entire Louisville team, when Paul VI was in the area, went to go watch one of his games this year. He's going to be special, and Louisville could use him stepping up because they're losing two awesome graduate transfers in Damian Lee and Trey Lewis. And his high school coach is on the bench, Glenn Ferrulo, Paul VI. Frank Jackson hits the floor hard. Right. 
And we wouldn't blame Jackson if he didn't come back into this game. That's right. He's set to graduate high school next month at Lone Peak High School outside of Salt Lake City. Talking to his dad, Al, last week at the Nike Hoop Summit in Portland, Oregon. Said he's going down to North Carolina to get school started early in May, be on campus, and going to fly back for his graduation after going to start classes. Let's take a look here. You see, you see that little contact there? And you just lose your footing there, and it's hard to make a proper landing. Watch this little bump here on his left side. And he just kind of lost his balance in the air, and tough to recover when you're that high in the air. You can see his head bounce yeah. a little bit at the end. Yeah. It's really a shame because he's been one of my favorite players to watch all summer long. I've been really impressed with how he's played. He's going to be a wonderful compliment to Grayson Allen and Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard had one special year for the Duke Blue Devils. And Jackson's role elevated within the last 10 days yeah. with Derek Thornton's departure and his final destination for at least his next year is unknown right now, but Jackson is in line to be the point guard next year, which it's going to be a pretty good year to be a point guard yeah. at Duke. Well, There's so many weapons mm -hmm. coming back. They have 60% of their scoring coming back. If you count Emil Jefferson getting a sixth year, you got Kennard, as you mentioned, Fonz, an outstanding shooter. Andrew Jones headed to Texas on that layup. But, but Duke is going to be so powerful on the perimeter next year. Matt Jones still coming back. Yeah. And a lot of talent next year. And then this freshman class with Frank Jackson, Jason Tatum. You got Harry Giles. When he gets healthy, he's just a beast. And depending on the lineup that he throws out there with Coach K, with Frank Jackson out there, you have another guy who can beat you off the bounce and get to the rim. They ran the second most isolation plays in the nation last year. I can see them leading that category again next year. <laughs> yeah. With all the talent. You know, Tatum operates so well in space. And how about that basket by 44, the Blacks, Tony Bradley. I just love this kid, guys. I just love him. Does everything fundamentally sound in the post. He knows how to score with his back to the basket. He's headed to North Carolina. He has a nice one dribble to the rim in the paint. His game is in the paint. Mm -hmm. It's at the rim. He knows who he is, a true center, soft touch, outstanding student. And I think he's going to be highly productive. Well, when you consider Tar Heels. Yeah, when you consider the bigs that North Carolina's losing, Joel James and Bryce Johnson, yeah. he's going to have to go in and fit right away, and he'll get some touches early and often because you know they like to throw that basketball inside. Well, as a freshman, I know he's thicker and bigger than mm -hmm. Bryce Johnson, mm -hmm. and he's a little bit skinnier than Kennedy Meeks as a freshman. <laughs> that's, a perfect, that's a perfect blend for Tony Bradley. <laughs> I, I think he's outstanding. I don't think he gets enough, uh, I agree. whether it's praise or hype, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, but... I think he's going to be terrific at North Carolina. Omari Spellman, number 16 in the ESPN 100, out of St. Thomas More School in Connecticut, going to Villanova. Other signee in that class is Dylan Painter from Hershey, PA, who we saw in the game preceding this one, the Jordan Brand Regional game. And Painter, he, a tough kid. He's a physical kid, and he'll do all the little things for Jay Wright. Yeah, I like Amara Spellman. He's going to fit right in with the loss of Daniel Oshefu to graduation. A guy who they can throw it into and get them some buckets to compliment Chris Jenkins, my favorite Villanova Wildcat. Don't forget Jalen Brunson at the point. As, like a, as a freshman, how about the, the poise and control he played with? Yes. Ooh. A lot of chances there at the bucket. It's Markel Fultz who scores. And don't be surprised with a couple injuries that we've had here early if guys start to be a little bit more tentative when they're around the rim. Not wanting to hurt each other and not wanting to try to make a spectacular play either. Malik Monk is your runaway star right now. He's got a game high 15 points. Baseline drive, count it, and the foul for Bruce Brown, number 31 in the ESPN 100, signed to Miami. 52-44, and when we come back, he's wearing number one. He's ranked number one. Quint will talk with Harry Giles. I was the number one player in the nation, Harry Giles. This past summer, explosive. Strong at the rim. He's got a little bit of a face-up game. He's relentless on the glass. Plays with a great motor. He's fluid when he faces up to the basket. 
And with his back to the basket, showing a little left-handed hook in the lane. He had an outstanding summer The CP3. Part of the Duke class, number two in the country, only behind Kentucky, where the Wildcats come in on top. And right now, Harry Giles is with Quinn Kessner. Yeah, number one player, uh, knee injury in November. So it's been uh, five or six months right now. How, how, is, how would you best describe uh, your rehab? I'm feeling great, uh, getting stronger. You know, each time every VSS and I go to, and just trying to get back on the court and be ready for November. Uh, are you running? Are you jogging? Uh, kind of take the fans inside where, where you're at. Uh, I'm not running or jogging yet, but you know, I'm building my way up to that. You know, kind of working on my takeoff. You know, with band work, kind of working on my you know release. And, you know, get ready to take off the run. So, you know, hopefully pretty soon we'll be running and jogging. How do you best describe your game when you're on? Uh, versatile. That's, the, you know, the best way I can describe it. I can go to details, you know, kind of inside out, you know, playing the post and, you know, pulling bigger guys outside. Scary moment just uh, a second ago with Frank uh, Jackson, your, your future teammate, being taken inside with an apparent head injury. Jason Tatum's off to a good start. What, what type of relationships have you been developing? Uh, me, you know, me and Jason have been cool since about our freshman year high school. You know, with USA basketball and just playing against each other in AAU is something we built. And then Frank, ever since he found out, he committed to Duke. And I've tried to reach out to him ever since he just built my relationship with him and just hang out every time we can. What's your mindset going to Duke? I'm just trying to go in with open minds, uh, learn from the, you know, upperclassmen. Definitely learn from Coach K. You know, he's the greatest coach. And just, I want to go win the national championship. That's my ultimate goal. So win the national championship. Yes, sir. Going to work hard. And just, I'm ready for everything. Thanks, Harry. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. Hope to see you on the court soon. The formula last time was a freshman big man. Perhaps two times in three years isn't far out of reach for the Blue Devils. Well, when they won that national championship, don't forget they had Quinn Cook, mm -hmm. right? They had Emil Jefferson, they had Marshall Plumley, so they had some, as Coach K likes to say, secure upper class leadership. <laughs> and when you look at the returners this year for Duke, I think they have that again. With Kennard, Jones, Mill Jefferson. Yeah, they're gonna be really good. You know, I, I like Harry Giles because he reminds me of a young Chris Weber. He's got his length. He has his mobility, Ooh. not quite his Ooh, skill. You read my not, notes. Not you read my skill. notes. No, I got on mine, and I can say I cheated off yours and put it on mine, but it's clearly coming off of mine. Paul, no but, one can uh, read your handwriting. But, but, so, yeah. <laughs> but he's not as skilled, because Chris Weber was amazingly skilled at 6'10", 240. And, be, and before I forget, let's not forget Grayson Allen coming back. Yeah. I mean, the main man for Duke. So loaded offensively. You talk about they led the nation in isolation plays, mm -hmm. Fonz. I can see that again. Coach K does a masterful job of creating his offense based on his personnel. Agreed. Cassius Winston at the line, grew up looking up to Draymond Green and Joe Crawford. Coming up tonight, 11 Eastern, don't miss Sports Center at night with Stan and Neil live from LA. They'll have highlights and analysis from Major League Baseball, the NHL playoffs, as well as an NBA playoff preview. It's also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Talk about Duke and the point guard situation there with Derek Thornton leaving. He reclassified to come in early, and perhaps it's understandable to think he came in with expectations that the scheme would be similar to what it was for Tyus Jones. A lot of opportunity to score. You talked about isolation plays. It wasn't the case, but then there's the other side of it. Why not stay when you're going to have such a talented crew around you this coming year? Well, first of all, you know, Quinn Cook accepted Tyus Jones. Yes. They became brothers yes. and won a national championship. You pick a school, Fonz, and you leave a school, for usually the same reason, playing time, mm -hmm. if you think about it. So without talking to anybody on Thornton's side or Duke's side, my opinion as a longtime coach, you have to know guys are coming in behind you, especially at a school like Duke. Every year. Every year. And if you're not comfortable with that, I, I'm very comfortable. <laughs> and Tom Izzo's really comfortable yes, with Miles Bridges above the rim. <laughs> what you you, you have to fight it out for your position mm -hmm. and you get better by playing against guys as good and better and guess what you get to play with them in games I have to assume that Derek Thornton left because Frank Jackson coming in may eat into his playing time yeah. that's the only reason I can see hey UNLV could use him now he'd be their third scholarship player it's a great point <laughs> By the way, as the clock winds inside of one minute here in the first half, there's still time not to shoot against Udoka Zubaki, but to get your questions in on Twitter to use the hashtag AskCoachB. I'm a big fan of Miles Bridges. I said earlier, he reminds me of Rodney Rogers. This kid can really get off the floor. 
explosive. The area of his game he needs to work on is a consistent 15-foot jump shot. And once he gets that down, you can forget about it. You're absolutely right, Fonz. He can make the three. He's worked on that. Terrific at the rim. He needs that middle game. And Tom Izzo will give it to him. Congratulations to Tom Izzo for the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yes. Amir Coffey with the runaway. You know, another thing Miles Bridges as a young guy can work on is learning that your girlfriend or fiance or wife is always right. His girlfriend, Michelle Johnson, signed to play at Middle Tennessee. So he's just got to know, you don't talk trash in that matchup there, especially when <laughs> Middle Tennessee takes down Michigan State in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Life lessons coming early for Miles Bridges. Pull up for Fox is no good, and we've got the East team leading the West, 59-54 at the break. And a good start for the native of Arkansas, Malik Monk, 15 points, 7 of 12 from the floor. At the half, it'll be our Jordan Brand Classic girls recap. The state of Texas featured prominently in that game. Quint chats with Maya Moore, and we answer your questions from Twitter and the hashtag AskCoachB. 59-54 at halftime in Brooklyn. Welcome back to the 2016 Jordan Brand Classic presented by American Family Insurance. At the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, it's the East Team 59, the West Team 54. Mike Cousins, Paul Biancardi, and Lafonso Ellis. They do give us stats, Paul, but as you did last summer, thank you, you very much. Let me just do it like that. that. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. it's, it's about that time In all-star games, that's what we do. <laughs> For the high school seniors, Fonz. You know what? about all-star games, I, I, Fonz. I, I'm new to this, sir. Am I supposed to ball mine up and throw it away, too? No, you're just playing the all-star <laughs> oh, okay. games. My bad. What stood out to you from the first half, Fonz? Uh, we talked about him in the open. De'Aaron Fox, I love how he competes out there on the floor. A guy who's been able to make some three-point shots early. I love how he gets to the offensive glass. And this is the area of his game that's underrated. His ability to knock down the long ball. Has a couple steals as well. Miles Bridges. I mean, he'll beat you from the outside. He's comfortable. But he's nasty <laughs> at the rim, Fonz, like you. <laughs> up high. I mean, this guy can grab alley-oops. He's power inside. He's got a little bit of a low post game. And then there's Malik Monk just draining it from deep. We just talked about three top ten players in the senior class. Wow. Lofonzo turned his stat sheet into a paper plane. Fortunately, I saved mine. So we've got De'Aaron Fox with 11 points and Malik Monk with 15 bridges with 11 as well headed to Michigan State. So Marquise Bolden with six points as well. His decision imminent between Duke and Kentucky. And TCU is a third candidate as well. Fox down the lane. And for De'Aaron Fox. There's your guy, Fonz. There's your guy. Going 13 points. You know, Fonz, early in his career, uh -huh. he scored more than he facilitated. Really? And to be a point guard, he understood that he had to get others involved, De'Aaron Fox. He's found the balance this summer. That's how he gets into our top ten. Yeah, it looks that way. And again, I fell in love with him because he's a willingness to guard. One of the fastest guards I've seen in a long time. Reminds me of Isaiah Taylor from Texas in the end speed. Phenomenal. VJ King takes the lob from De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, Fox has great speed. Fastest guy in the class, in my opinion, and a lockdown defender. A couple of injuries if you're looking for guys on the floor here in the second half. We saw Altariq Gilbert. For the East team going to UConn, go down with a shoulder injury in the first half. And Frank Jackson of the West team going to Duke, hit the floor hard in the first half as well. Yeah, really sad to see guys go down that way in an all-star game, but you know, you only hope that those guys, that is something minor as Cassius Winston knocks down a sweet little layup here. Can I be a little selfish, Paul? Sure. Can we throw the ball inside to the bigs and let them go to work? Well, first they got to go on the block, Fonz. They all want to set ball screens, and they all want to pick and pop. Pick and roll, then throw it into the post. Look, this is an all-star game, baby. The post is open. Look, when, when the guard's telling me to come out and set the pick and roll, I'm going to stay there and put my hand up and say, no, 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 throw that thing on the inside. <laughs> and that's the difference between you and a lot of other guys. Th these guys call for the ball. You know a great post player. He demands the basketball. Put out a bio in there. What's bam? Give him the rock. 
B.J. King takes the open path to the hoop. Said the Louisville staff wants him to work on catching and shooting off of screens next year, a la Damian Lee this past season. Well, you're talking about a Louisville team that's returning a bunch of versatility and 6'10", Ray Spaulding. Daniel Dale is going to be really good. Donovan Mitchell. And so you need a guy who can catch and shoot, who can move off of ball screens. The difference between a catch and shoot, wow. I love that move. <laughs> With his left hand. Go ahead, Fox. Finish your thought. Catch and shoot, spot up shooter. Difference. Yeah, difference between the spot up shooter and the catch and shoot. A catch and shoot guy can come off screens and knock down shots. A spot up shooter is just that. You can throw him the ball and he can knock down shots from there. That's why I love Malik Monk because he can do both. Winston got caught in the air. Spartan to Spartan. Bridges no good on the three, and Bolden keeps it alive. You know, when Bridges gets to Michigan State, my goodness. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But when he gets to East Lansing, he's just got to make sure, Fonz, and I know Tom Izzo and his great staff will take care of this, but he can't fall in love with the three. Right. When he stands behind the three-point line and he's not shooting, he's got to crack the glass. Bruce Brown, <laughs> look out going down south. the middle. <laughs> it's going south, my cousins. It's going Four south. Gables. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he's going to be a huge pickup for them. This is a Miami team that's losing Sheldon McClellan and Angel Rodriguez. A lot of room to go with Jaquan Newton, who I thought was the best six man in the ACC last year. Monk left a little bit short for Miles Bridges. He's got it anyway. He keeps on rolling. Bridges now has 15. Bridges has an appetite to score the ball. He really does. He's not satisfied with just getting the basketball. He wants to score it. How about this one upstairs? That's his fifth so far in this game. That was easy. But how about Bruce Brown headed to play for Jim Laranega? Miami. That thing too. Ooh. <laughs> Him and Dewan Hewell. Yes, sir. Rodney Miller, 6'11". Outstanding class coming in for Jim Laranega. They've also got DJ Vasilovich, a guard coming in from Australia, and are still on the market because James Palmer transferring out as well. So mm -hmm. they are going to be probably on the lookout, as Jim Laranega said yeah. after the season, for the fifth year guy. Yeah, Jaquan Newton will probably play the point guard That's for right. them. Take more over for Angel scoring. Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah, more of a scorer. They're going to have to teach him the nuances of the point guard position, but he's a competitor from Philly. This guy scores with his left. He's so good. Like a left-hander. Yeah, and the, the, the crazy thing about Bolton, he was actually born left-handed. He's a right-handed shooter, folks, but you know, before he can even remember, when I talked to him yesterday, his dad changed him from a lefty to a righty, but you can see his instincts out there on the floor. Love going over that right shoulder and finishing with his left hand. How about that passing all the way ahead to Malik Monk? But you know what I like about it, Mike? It started off a block shot on the defensive end. Miles Bridges. Bridges. A little defense down here. You know, it's good for basketball parents to change their kids' dexterity. Mm -hmm. Baseball parents, if your kid is left-handed, keep them left-handed. The odds are a lot better that way. That's right. Some NBA draft news this week. A former number one player in the ESPN 60 found out he's eligible for the draft. And Quinn Kesnick talks with him when we come back. Here in Brooklyn, we take a look at tonight's Jordan Brand Classic Senior Night, brought to you by American Family Insurance. American Family Insurance teamed up to present the inaugural Jordan Brand Classic Senior Night Tour, honoring the premier high school basketball players from around the country in their hometowns. All Jordan Classic players were recognized as the tour traveled to 20 different states with a special commemorative banner unveiling for the high school gym. The American Family Insurance Tour was a great send-off for each of the players to follow their dreams to Brooklyn to join the all-time Jordan Classic greats. Here's Jonathan Isaac at the free-throw line, headed to Florida State next year. We've shown you some of the greats who've played in this game. All-time high score, 34 points by LeBron. It's the mark to reach, and right now our high scorer in this one is Malik Monk. He's halfway there, 17 points for the future Kentucky guard. And I bet you LeBron did that and didn't get a lot of threes at that time. <laughs> Wasn't a great three-point shooter, yeah. but that guy's a load in the post. And, and that's, that's what we talked about earlier. He's got sweet feet when he catches that thing out there for a guy who's about, I don't know, I think he's more like 285. That is a big dude. When you think about the way Kansas likes to play, Bill yeah. Self in that two game, the high-low game, high low, yes. Udoka Azubuke, tremendous in the low post, 
getting angles to the rim. This Spellman getting above the rim. Backside of the play, Spellman is getting it done tonight. We talked about his injury before, some torn ligaments in his ankle. He said he was up to almost 295 pounds. Playing weight is probably more around 275. I'll tell you what, when he gets in great shape, he's going to be a load for Jay Wright going over. The thing I was impressed with him uh, with over the last couple of days is, you know, even with the Azabuke who would back him down in the low post, he didn't give ground. He does a really nice job of getting low with his base and keeping you from backing him down. And you can you can see the skills in Omari Spellman. I mean, it's all about conditioning. His his upside funds 13 in the white going to Villanova is in his conditioning. He's gonna play with a great point guard in Jalen Brunson. He'll feed the big fellow the ball. Azubiki fouled on the way up. We showed you Thon Maker before, number one player formerly of the ESPN 60, and Quinn talked with him in the last time out. Quinn. Bro. I spoke with him off camera. It was a little camera shy. Uh, he's excited, you know, uh, able to reclassify basically and, and considered a 2015 graduate, which now makes him eligible for the NBA draft. And I asked him about the combine. He said he has not been invited yet, but it's time for him to go to work. Uh, Likeable young guy, seven foot one, Sudanese Australian. Uh, it lives in Canada right now, and uh, you know he's got to hire an agent basically, right, Paul? That's his next step. And uh, if you ever watched him play. Seven footer who runs yes. with great effort, plays the game with great energy, and you, you cannot dispel that when you're going to play at the next level because they're looking for everyday guys in the NBA funds. As you know, guys who are competitive, everyday performers, skill level good, needs to improve, yes. body needs to widen out. It's hard when you're from Sudan. The body types there, uh, the calf and the hips are usually thin, so it's hard to add strength, but he's got terrific mobility yeah and he'll be a first round pick so i'm happy for the guy that he'll be able to take care of himself and his family financially but uh he had notre dame on his long list so i was hoping we could get him up in south bend you can vote for the game mvp using the hashtag next versus next with players last names next versus next 14 minutes left here in the jordan brand classic when you look at Thon Maker, we talked about his body type mm -hmm. not being ready. You know, he, he'd be a great pick for teams that have multiple picks. You pick him in the end of the first round. You put him in the D-League to play and develop. That's a great point. And, you know, he gets an NBA salary playing in the D-League. It's not a bad option. There are going to be ripple effects. There already have been ripple effects as far as assistant coaching jobs go when it relates to Thon Maker. And then going forward, as far as it affects the NBA draft, does this open a door now for guys who can say, hey, I graduated high school early as Thon is in the class of 2015 and not 16 to go play at a prep school and not be quote unquote exposed by going to college or making the route harder by going overseas? I spoke to his guardian, Ed Smith, yesterday. And Don Maker was a freshman at the Carlisle School in Virginia, 2012, 2013. That was his freshman year. So his graduating year was this year. Mm. But he graduated in 215. He took a heavy course load over time, was able to graduate in 215. So this last year that he played up in Orangeville Prep, that was his one year removed from his graduating class, and he's 19. So it can happen. But those factors have to come into play. Jason Tatum with the finish. And it's nothing new here. This has been an option available to people for sure. a while, just not one that has been heavily exercised. You just have to understand the collective bargaining agreement. It is complicated. It's wordy. <laughs> but I know one thing. When you start your freshman year, that's when your clock starts in high school. Uh, if you can graduate early, all the power to you. And if you're 19 years old, when you're removed after that, you can head to the NBA draft. 99.9% .9 of the guys, Fonz, and you know this, you played in the league a long time. They need to go to college after high school. V very few can make that jump. Yeah, I'm just happy for all sides that he actually ended up falling within the rules. So the NBA didn't want to deal with that old, and if it wouldn't have fallen within the rules, I don't think they would have allowed him to go in because they didn't want to open that Pandora's box because there would have been several kids trying to do the same thing because it would have set a precedent. The last time most NBA scouts saw him was in February at the Basketball Without Borders event at the NBA All-Star Game in Toronto. So combine invite would be a good thing for him. Workouts as well. And he right now number 20 on Chad Ford's big board. And he really does need to go. And he doesn't just need to work out. He needs to play. The scouts have not seen him play since when you mentioned Basketball Without Borders. Last time before that was the Hoop Summit.
Bam Adebayo, perhaps one of college basketball's most ferocious dunkers next year. Throwing it down, he'll be at the free throw line, and Miles Bridges has been elevating and playing above the rim here tonight. The excitement of the Jordan Brand Classic 2016. He's the National Gatorade Player of the Year going to Duke. It's Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, I just love his game. This kid's got the escape dribble, understands a high release, and there's not a place on the floor that he can't score the basketball from. So smooth, reminds me from a smooth standpoint of Otto Porter, and he can finish left or right hand around the rim out of St. Louis Chaminade. He's terrific. You love staying in the state of Missouri with your comparisons, huh? Otto Porter from Missouri, am I right? Absolutely. You're from Missouri and Jason Tatum. I'm from Illinois, right oh, across right. the bridge. <laughs> But well, these guys I love. Bam Adebayo, Adebayo, the most productive player. If you're looking for rebounds and points in the paint, it's Big Bam. I think Jonathan Isaac has the greatest room for growth. Josh Jackson has all the versatility you want in a superstar. And we talked about it, Fonz. Jason Tatum, the ability to score the basketball, especially inside the arc against the set defense. And Markel Fultz, where he started from being cut. Yeah on the JV at DeMather to the WCAC Player of the Year, now a McDonald's All-American Jordan Brand Classic, top 15 player in the country. And then Lonzo Ball, I believe, will impact UCLA. All those guys will impact their schools, but Lonzo Ball, I believe, will have the greatest impact next year in college basketball. UCLA needs him, and he makes everybody better. He only passes it for assist. I, I don't think I've seen a player, I don't know, ever, who's as unselfish as Lonzo Ball is. How about the guy up there in the Raptors, uh, Jason Kidd? Jason Kidd's pretty good, but Lonzo Ball kind of goes to another level in terms of his desire to make other guys better around him, and he and his court vision and his size is what makes him unique. Now, I love Jason Kidd. I, wouldn't, I wish I had a chance to play with him when I was in the league, because all you have to do is have your hands ready. Jason Kidd was spectacular. And that's what Lonzo Ball is. You, you, you're open, he's gonna find you. Indeed. Pretty good for Lonzo Ball and his Chino Hills High School team to have a couple other players who probably shoot about 40% from three-point range. There's a run out. And the last thing about Lonzo Ball, he makes you not only better, but he makes your team win. Yes. They went undefeated this year, and they played a lot of big boys. 35-0 and en route to a California State Championship. Brooklyn's own Chamori Pons going to St. John's next year. 36 in the ESPN 100. And Pons is a playmaker. He's a point maker. You know, Fonz, he could play on the ball. He's terrific in pick and roll. Run him off some screens. He can juke you off the bounce. Knows how to get to the rim New York style. Maybe right now. <laughs> They've got an eclectic <laughs> class coming in next year. Junior college signee Bashir Ahmed and German native Richard Freudenberg as well in that class. B.J. King making future coach Rick Pitino happy on that possession right there. Didn't let him turn the corner. That was an excellent job defensively by B.J. King. I'll tell you what, V.J. King has top, top 10 talent. He just needs to put it together consistently, rev up that motor, and who better than Rick Pertino to make V.J. King better? Yes. Miles Bridges, quick drop off, finished off from three by Malik Monk. 20 points now for Monk. Looks like Bridges wants a little bit of Monk. I'm sorry, Bridges wants a little bit of Tatum. I don't think they worked on defensive transition <laughs> yesterday in practice. I don't think so either. Yeah, when was the shooter out? I missed the defensive part. I know I was there for the whole thing. No, you missed the stretching. <laughs> the five on oh. Here comes Bradley showing off a, some ball handling and out of oh. 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 Get ready, Big Blue Nation, for that next year. I mean, look at those shoulders. Those shoulders are worth a lot of money. The yep. hands are secure and powerful, and he just attacks you, Fonz. He just attacks you. Winston shakes Indeed. and delivers. The NBA playoffs tomorrow. Four games, beginning with Pacers Raptors at 12:30 Eastern on ESPN, then at 3:30 on ABC. It's Steph Curry and the Warriors against the Rockets. Back at seven on ESPN, the Hawks and their defense host the Celtics, who were swept out last year by Cleveland. And then at 9:30, the Mavs are in Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. And all games are streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. How about the year Steph Curry has had? 
403 made three-point field goals. It's insane. Well, that's deep, Fonz, but this is at the rim. Look at Bam, he catches it, knows right where to go, right to the rim. Anybody in my way, I'm taking him down. I mean, he's powerful, he's explosive, and he's always in attack mode. He's gonna create a lot of fouls. He's gonna score in the paint, he's gonna score at the foul line. I see him as a double-double guy at Kentucky if he plays 30 minutes a game, which I'm pretty sure he will. Yeah, and, and Paul, I said to you yesterday, I'd heard so much about him, and watching him over two days, I, I, I didn't really like him earlier, but watching him the last couple days, I understand what he is. He's a shot-blocking, rebounding machine who has soft hands around the rim, and he'll be able to get deep post position against some of these smaller forwards and centers that are in college basketball. I agree with you. This was a busy week for high school basketball. Two top 15 guys. Terrence Ferguson to Arizona and then Josh Jackson to Kansas who entering the spring period was the only uncommitted player in the top 10 and then Thon Maker as we just talked about eligible for the NBA draft Paul tomorrow basketball stays here in Brooklyn the PSA Cardinals and Cal Supreme open things up the spring basketball period at the Nike EYBL I'm so excited for that matchup the number one junior in the nation DeAndre Ayton seven footer Shoots it from behind the arc, has a post game, sweet footwork. On the other side of the ledger, PSA Cardinals, Muhammad Bamba, 6'11, love him. 7'6 wingspan. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for that matchup. And a guy named Brandon McCool, McCoy from the West Coast. You'll hear about him. Tell you what, speaking of EYBL, I get a chance to leave here and go to Neptune tomorrow because the 16s are actually playing in Neptune, New Jersey. Get a chance to watch my youngest son, Walter Ellis, try to I, I got put Walter on the his team on the little map tomorrow, this Space Indy Heat. And uh, what a great experience for these young kids to be able to go and travel around the country at this time of the year and play against some of the best competition in the nation. Really excited about what I'm going to see tomorrow. And you said it, Fonz, competition. Kids need competition. If you don't get out of your little area, you don't find competition. So you got to travel to play against the best if you want to be the best. I just talked to the Shaq of the Mac and Gary Trent uh, before the game here, and he was telling me the exact same thing. It's part of the reason why he's going to send his kid to actually play at one of the schools that he can actually go and play night in and night out against some of the best competition while practicing day in and day out against some of the best players on his team. The Shaq of the Mac, <laughs> Gary Trent. He was a bad man. You know, Paul, I'm a little disappointed in our uh, Midwest or uh, Midwest-based colleague, John Stovall, that he hasn't given us the report on one of Indiana's best players, Walter Ellis. He's on, he's, he's on my radar, baby. He's on my radar. He's not there yet, but he's, he's certainly working hard to put himself in position. Closing in on eight minutes here in Brooklyn at the Jordan Brand Classic. Bridges had it poked away, and Jonathan Isaac comes up with it. You know, in games like this, this competition... Oh. A lot of skill. Right. Look at Jonathan Isaac. Three dribbles in the fast break with a soft pull up from distance. Leonard Hamilton, are you watching? I love his length because I think of Brandon Ingram. He's not quite as skilled as Brandon Ingram yet off the bounce, but I love Jonathan Isaac. Well, it's back-to-back -back years where Leonard Hamilton has pulled in a top 15 recruiting class to Tallahassee. The gem of that, Jonathan Isaac. Big part of the fun here at the Jordan Brand Classic up on the main concourse. Fans get to participate in interactive games. This is the Jordan Standard, which tests lateral and vertical movement, ball handling, dribbling with both hands, reaction time, the ability to stay low and play defense. Fans compete and then are given a score. Fans actually get to participate in the Jordan Next versus Next Skills Challenge in the Brooklyn Nets practice facility. Dribble, a layup, a chest pass, and then you got to hit a jumper from the free throw line. I think the winning time was around 17 seconds. Our executive producer, Chris Farrow, in a business suit and shoes, put up a nice time, 27 seconds. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, he was the winner against uh, our producer in the truck, Eric Swearingen, a UConn grad. <laughs> takes down a North Carolina grad. I can tell you this right now, neither one of them are in the top 100. <laughs> Let's go back to Quinn. He's with Victor Oladipo.
Victor, nice to see you here courtside once again this, this year. Uh, DeMatha High School, you, you had a nice senior season. You won 32 games, uh, but you didn't get to play in this game. And I remember talking about it and how much that motivated you back then. Well, take me back to the mindset. Um, I wasn't looked at as one of the best players in the world um, in, in high school at the time. Um, but, you know, my, my motivation and my uh, my hard work got me to where I'm at right now. You know, my mentality was I wanted to be in the NBA. Uh, my path was different from everybody else's, but that didn't mean I, I wasn't able to get there. So um, I just tried and worked hard, and uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to live out my dream. Yeah, what are those intangibles that these guys may or may not have that, that we can't see that are so important? Um, I think it's their, uh, just their self-belief. I think believing in yourself and not being afraid to, to, to take risks, um, to come out here and perform at a high level, uh, is, is a lot on your shoulders. And I think these young gentlemen have proven throughout their high school career that they're capable of that. And going on to their college careers, they can never lose that. What was the biggest challenge you faced in, in year one at Indiana? Uh, the biggest challenge was there, was there was somebody who's either been there for a year or been there for two years. and. Um, who's who's knows a little bit more who's who has my position, you know, and I'm trying to take it from him um, And it, it might not be in the uh, you know These guys might not be in the same situation as I was but uh, they might be um, and uh, My advice to them with that is just compete at a high level man, and if uh, Whatever is supposed to happen will happen. I mean they're gonna stand out it no matter what they do So just never lose that hard work and never get satisfied. That's such an interesting point because you want to be a good teammate but you want to work and push and, and maximize yourself and that's a tough balance exactly it's a real tough balance but at the end of the day uh, if you truly believe in yourself and you want to and you have a goal that you want to accomplish something then you can let anything and anyone get in your way when you look out here and watch these 20 guys well what stands out about their the way they play physically the way the way they approach the game um, i think um, the competitive nature is is getting higher and higher every year i come you know what i mean and um, young guys are growing up and and they have dreams and aspirations and um, you know they have that swagger and that and a little bit of cockiness that you know we might not have had when we were younger um, but it's always crazy man it's, it seems like guys keep getting more and more athletic too it's kind of weird too but um, it's pretty cool to us to be here and watch this this whole jordan brand thing grow and to watch young guys grow into the, and blossom into players that later in their lives they're chasing you now victor thank you i'm looking forward to the, that competition later in life too <laughs> great to see you victor thank you Guys, I had a chance to talk to one of the Orlando Magic assistant coaches, Monty Mathis, who coaches Victor Oladipo, and he said, this guy is just a fierce competitor. He says he's an everyday player, not a feel-like-it guy. He constantly wants more from himself, and he's always looking to improve. We heard that wisdom Fonz for the future classes. You know, he thinks everybody else is getting more athletic. I guess when you get older, Fonz, right, everybody else seems more athletic? Uh, no, no question <laughs> about it. I mean, you go into that league, everyone is athletic. So you got to be able to bring a your best move and have a counter move to your best move. Yeah, he's a big-time worker. Yes, he is. One of my favorite players in Indiana history. Sunday, our NBA playoff coverage continues on ABC with game one between Andre Drummond and the Pistons in the postseason for the first time since 09. And LeBron James and the Cavs top seed in the East at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. Coverage starts with NBA Countdown presented by Straight Talk Wireless at 2.30 Eastern. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Speaking of LeBron, St. Vincent, St. Mary High School, 2003 Jordan Brand Classic. Would anybody at that point in his life have predicted exactly wh what his stardom would lead to? I, I have to admit, I played with a guy named Jimmy Jackson, one of the best players in Ohio State history. And Jimmy Jackson got a chance to see this kid, LeBron, when he was in high school play. And he told me that this guy was going to be a multi-year all-star in the NBA, potentially the face of our league. And he's certainly been that. Fon, speaking of Ohio State, when I was an assistant coach, I went to recruit LeBron James in his first year, evaluate him, second year. And after a second season, an NBA scout told me, save your gas, save your postage. He's going right to the league. <laughs> and he was right. In that picture was Andre Drummond. If mm -hmm. you think back to his high school days, he was one of those guys who reclassified early and went right to Connecticut. He was supposed to go for a PG season, mm -hmm. uh, fifth year, but he graduated early. He ended up going right to the NBA. So he, you know, he played a fifth year of school, and he was eligible to go to Connecticut and right to the league. 
Jonathan Isaac was looking for the give and go. And instead, the basket counts for De'Aaron Fox, who's now got 20. Tell you what, my man De'Aaron Fox is having himself a game here. Guarding on the defensive end, scrappy, getting his hands, deflecting basketballs, and we got a chance to see a little hang time with a little bump there on there. I know it's an all-star game, but he's seven for 13. Mm -hmm. Efficient. You know, he doesn't hunt down a lot of shots. He understands that he has to set the table for everybody else to score. But my goodness, can he put the ball in the basket? Yes, he can. And fill a stat sheet, too, is the Gatorade Player of the Year in Texas. Averaged 32 points, eight rebounds, four assists. And he puts the ball in the basket, Fawns, from deep. But he has the pull-up jump shot, and he has that little teardrop when he gets in the lane. Indeed. I, so I think, valuable at the next level. Yeah, and I think this is going to give John Calipari the opportunity, along with Isaiah Briscoe, who's returning, oh. to actually put some pressure on the basketball and guard 94 feet. So I expect them to play with a little bit more pace this year, creating offense off of their defense. And Briscoe had a tough year shooting the basketball. That was kind. But defensively, he's just a beast. Briscoe. Yes, he is. You put him with Fox and all the length and athletic ability. <laughs> Marcus Lee coming back, the shot blocker at the rim. This is going to be one of the better defensive teams and, I believe, rebounding teams for Kentucky. Amari Spellman headed to Villanova. He's got a double-double, 10 points, 15 rebounds. And with five minutes left, is just two boards shy of tying the, uh, the mark set for this game by Amari Stoudemire. And he's not even in shape. I mean, he's not even in great physical condition yet. How much work does he need to do to be an 18 to 22 minute a night guy for Jay Wright next year? Well, I think he's going to be even more than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he's more like 30 to 35. I agree. But it's all in the preseason conditioning. Mm -hmm. But even before that, and Fonz, you know this as a former McDonald's All-American and a star at Notre Dame, it's what you do in the offseason decides whether or not you're going to be a player during the season. Yeah, and part of that is, you know, these kids go off to college now, and they had a great advantage over our time, Paul, is they have nutritionists on campus. They're, they're training three, four, five times a, a, a week. You know, I don't even know some schools that are even doing yoga and things of that nature. So once he gets access to the nutrition and speed and conditioning, I'm not concerned about him at all, and I agree with you. He's going to be a 30, 35 point or minute a night guy. Remember, Villanova likes to play a little full court one, two, two back into some type of zone or switching man. He's perfect for that that strategy. If okay. yoga is now is body pump like the next thing is spinning going to be coming after that, and you just got the whole class workout regimen going from your local gym now at the college level. <laughs> oh, no question, man. No question. Have you done yoga? You do a little power core yoga, man. You feel like you've lifted about two, 300 pounds when I've, you leave that joint. I've got some work to do on that. <laughs> he, he runs yeah. on the treadmill, though. No, we're not talking about a little gentle <laughs> flow stuff now. We're talking about some core, some strong, some serious stuff. Now, watch Spellman go to work. See? My pigeon pose is lacking. Uh, <laughs> my favorite, Savasana. Your speed and quickness is lacking, too, but let's not get down into details. But I'm going to tell you what about Omari Spellman. Uh -huh. Against the set defense, he can score one-on-one. -on -one. He wants the ball on the block. He's got moves. He's got footwork. The way Jay Wright yeah. has outstanding spacing in mm -hmm. the half-court set. Mm -hmm. You talked about them defensively. He's a legitimate low-post threat right away at Villanova. And can make a 15-foot jump shot with a range out to three, which opens up spacing even more for, I'm going to say it one more time, guys like my guy, Chris Jenkins, to get to the rim. Going Chris. off of what you talked about as far as nutritionists, talking to Cassius Winston, who's going to Michigan State, uh -huh. number four in the white, mm -hmm. he was telling me, and, and this is common among many schools, he's got a workout plan for Michigan State, a big binder, and a diet guide as well. Eat this, don't eat that. Uh, this, it all starts be yeah. well before they get on campus. Well, remember now, once you've graduated from high school, you can start taking summer classes, which allows you access even sooner. Did you say do this, don't do that? That eat was the this, don't eat that. Yeah, I thought it was do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? <laughs> Good song, by the way. You got 3.43 to go. And Omari Spellman trying to close in on Omari's rebound record. ESPN's exclusive presentation. Recruiting class, the Kentucky Wildcats of tomorrow. They have all kinds of all-stars coming in. Four in the top 40. See, Big Bam to the rim. De'Aaron Fox, a terrific two-way point guard. Wenyan Gabriel, long, decent skills, plays hard. And Malik Monk, who I think has the best long-range shooting ability in this senior class. That class is athletic, 
That class plays hard. It's well skilled. And I'll tell you what, they're all coachable. Wenyan Gabriel really took off last summer, number 15 in the ESPN 100. So he's from Sudan originally. He now resides in New Hampshire. You want to guess how many players born in New Hampshire have made the NBA? How many? One. <laughs> Matt Bonner. <laughs> really? The Red Rocket? Actually, I recruited him when I was at Boston College. He went to Florida. For Billy Donovan. So that was a miss for you. Yeah, it was a, not, another <laughs> miss. But let's talk about Kentucky, okay? Mm -hmm. These guys go play for John Calipari for a lot of reasons. One of them I know is he doesn't coddle guys, okay? No. He's, he's pushing guys. He's trying to make them better. He'll sit you if you don't play hard. He did that with Skyl this year. I don't think they'll have a problem with this class. But I think John Calipari is the master at managing the egos of great players. And, and we know that's not easy to do. Well, I think the great selling point, nice, as Tatum <laughs> gets to his left with another powerful finish. I think his, his calling card right now is just simply, guys, yes, I want to have an opportunity to win a national title, but your future is more important to me than that. So let's come up with the formula that we can do both at the same time. And there's no one in college basketball better at it than John Calipari. What is it, four Final Fours mm -hmm. in five years with a national championship? I mean, last year they yeah. won the SEC, yeah. and, and they were very young. I mean, I thought John Calipari last year and both Mike Krzyzewski yes. did a great job coaching young talent. Indeed. Those teams were not seasoned. They didn't have great uh, senior leadership, or, or not leadership, let me take that back. They didn't have great senior talent, but both Coach K and Coach Cal, I think, did an outstanding job with very young talent. Fonz, you made the good point about the long term for players, where the question he poses is essentially, if you're thinking about the NBA, what's more important right now? Is it your family mm -hmm. or is it the Kentucky Wildcats? Yeah. And if the answer is the former, you know where you're going next year. Yeah, and, and I got a chance to watch this practice. Julius, wow, wow, what a good finish. Julius Randle's one year at Kentucky. And I asked him after the practice, I was like, Cal, why don't you just put him in the box? There's nobody in college basketball that can score, that can keep him from scoring. He's like, Fonz, but if I put him in the box, then It'll be great for us, for Kentucky, but what have I done for his future? So he started to isolate him on the right side of the floor, 15, 20 feet out, or at the top of the key, and that's exactly what he's doing right now for the Los Angeles Lakers and is very successful at it. I'll tell you what else Calipari has done in Kentucky. He makes those guys defend and rebound, or they sit. I've been to his practices at Kentucky, and Fonz, I recruited against him when I was at Boston College. I mean, I know his MO, and it's defending and rebounding, and he makes talent defend and rebound. That adds up to a lot of wins. And Malik Monk having himself a nice evening. The senior from Bentonville, Arkansas. He had a tough choice when picking Kentucky, whether he leaves the state of Arkansas, where the hometown pressure is, where his brother Marcus played football and basketball, his cousin Rashad Madden played at Arkansas, or do you leave and go to the bigger name school? When you think about it, the last few top recruits in the state of Arkansas Kayvon Allen went to Florida. Bobby Portis stayed home. Archie Goodwin ended up at Kentucky. We saw a picture of the uh, West coach, Chris Dyer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's outstanding coach. He's uh, Marquise Bolden's coach at DeSoto High School. In my mind, one of the best high school coaches in the country. What, what a great staffs for both teams tonight. I like their attention to detail over the last couple days as I've watched them. Tremendous. I've been in his practices before, boy. Can he really coach? Shamori Pons with the fadeaway out of Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn. Won a, not only a city title, but a state federation title here in New York this year. And you heard the crowd just cheer him on. They want to see a little one-on-one -on -one action as we get down the stretch. We saw that with Isaiah Briscoe when he played in this game out of New Jersey. They know who the local players are. Yeah, right now they want to do it. Do them offense. Nice to see a local bucket. guy. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson High School. In his backcourt, another Division I player, Rasheem Dunn, who signed to play at St. Francis Brooklyn next year. And just give Chris Mullen and his staff some time. They'll build it. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's easy to say you're going to build it. Guys, I know for a fact it's really hard. It takes four or five years. And especially when a new coach comes in and you've got players who then leave, which makes it even harder for the new coach to fill those talent gaps. And that's going on all around the country right now. With all these coaching changes, 
just rosters are blowing up. Look at UNLV. I don't think they have but two scholarship guys left on their roster. We send our condolences to Tina Kunzer Murphy, the athletic director at UNLV, trying to find a coach now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is if coaches are allowed to leave, then the players should have the opportunity to leave as well. The players go to the schools, not for the schools. They go to the schools for the coaches. I completely agree with you, Fonz, is that if there is a coaching change, that should automatically waive that one-year transfer period for the players. So you don't think they should sit? Not if the coach leaves. Yeah, because the coaches are free to go wherever they want without penalty. That's right. Maybe a buyout. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not fair, but we can make it equitable. So 131, 117 is the final here as the East takes down the West at the 2016 Jordan Brand Classic. Not much defense in this one, but a lot of talent <laughs> in the Jordan Brand Classic. The Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, the Kentucky class, number one in the country. So Tyler Ennis's prediction proved to be true, as you said there. Not a lot of defense going to be played today, but this game was a, about a lot of fun for the class of 2016. And the last time that we get to see these players before they become the college freshmen in next year's college basketball class. And Paul, we look forward to that quickly with this class of 2016. What kind of an impact are they going to make next year in college basketball? I think a big one. There's no true superstars. There's no Ben Simmons, Jaleel Okafor, Anthony Davis. But there's a lot of star power in this class. And I believe a lot of stars in the making. And I think it's going to impact college basketball right away. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of one and dones as well. Yeah, many of the schools are, have great needs. And many of these players are going to schools to fit those needs. I agree with you. I think they're going to have outstanding years next season. All right, let's send th things over to Quint. Big night for Kentucky, big night for Malik Monk. Uh, why were you so successful? I was just trying to get to the lane. You know, all-star game is really not that much defense plan. I was just trying to get to the lane. Then my teammates spread the floor real well just to get me open, and I was able to knock down some shots. Co-MVP with uh, De'Aaron Fox. Uh, big night for Kentucky. What, 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 what's that like? Oh, it was great. Both of us being a backcourt next year, it's going to be an exciting ne year next year. What, what was your mindset when you took the court tonight? Great crowd here in New York. There's certain uh, electricity to this event. Mm -hmm. oh, I was just come in and be focused and just get better and play hard with my with the East and West team. Congratulations, Willie. Let's see if we can run down De'Aaron here, Mike. De'Aaron Fox tonight, 23 points, and you talked about it during the game, efficient, 8 of 16 from the field, and a perfect 5 of 5 at the line. De'Aaron Fox was sensational tonight, but Malik Monk showed us a lot. We knew he was a phenomenal athlete, showed us some aerial attacks, but what I was more impressed with is his ability to pull up and knock it down off the dead run. That is really impressive and takes great footwork. He has big time elevation on that jumper, Fonz. So a big game for Malik Monk, and let's go back to Quinn. De'Aaron Fox is, is our uh, co-MVP. You just got a you just got a handshake and a congratulations from Carmelo, man. That's pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, I just want to thank God. You know, He gave me the ability to come out here. Uh, I, find, I played well. I mean, I've been on the road for three weeks, and uh, while everybody else is fatigued, I mean, I'm trying to trying to keep it up. They nicknamed you the general. Why, why is that? Uh, Coach Cal told me they, he nicknamed me the general because all the recruits that committed after me said they wanted to go to war with me. And, uh, I mean, that's, an, that's, a, that's a great compliment coming from my peers and guys that are on top of the world just like me. You mentioned the grind of this all-star trail. How, how did you fight through it? How did you persevere? Uh, I mean, this, sh this should be easy. You know, um, I want to be a pro. And those guys, that's, I mean, they play 82 games, so three weeks shouldn't be anything to me. What was it like uh, playing in practice this week with so many NBA scouts? And then tonight you come out here, Victor Eladipo, Tyler Ennis, Carmelo. Uh, it goes on and on and on. What was that like? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get used to playing on the big stage. You know, uh, those guys play in front of a crowd like this every single night. So uh, I just want it to be normal for me before I step on foot uh, at Kentucky. Super job. Congratulations. Mike. Can't get to a bigger stage than Kentucky next year. And, Paul, as we look ahead now, we've got the class of 2017 trying to push their way into the forefront. New player rankings on RecruitingNation.com April 26th. Yeah, there could be some changes in that, but you heard De'Aaron Fox say he wants to be a pro. I think when you go to college, Fonz, you have to leave yourself behind and join the team. That's the best way to do it. Uh, without a doubt is you've got to understand what do you bring to the table that can impact your team right now. And when you understand that, it allows you to be successful as a freshman.
So a fond farewell to the class of 2016. We look ahead now to tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern time on ESPNU. It's Nike EYBL action. The spring evaluation period has begun for these college coaches and these players. A quick preview, Paul. A 217 is good. 216 was spectacular. DeAndre Ayton, though, Fonz, he's a freak. He's seven footer, scores with his back to the basket and a three point shot. He's a big time player. All I have to say is, let's go, Spies in the Heat. <laughs> <laughs> so, our final score tonight is the East 131 and the West 117. Quite a fun night here in Brooklyn. Thanks for being a part of it. For Quinn Kesnick, LaFonso Ellis, and Paul Biancardi, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mike Cousins. Coming up next year on ESPN2, it's NFL Live. Thanks for watching, and good night from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn.